Hello everyone. Today I want to talk to you about gene set enrichment analysis. Now gene set enrichment analysis is a way to analyze your expressed genes as they are enriched in a specific gene set. So for example, you have a data set from NCBI. You want to download the raw FASTQ files and then you can use the tbioinfo platform to process those raw files into a table of expression. Now, here's the table, here's the platform, the tbioinfo platform, and over here under RNA-seq, you would be able to create a pipeline that will connect multiple analysis steps together so that you can go from start to then mapping, for example, on transcripts, to then creating an expression table, and then finally differential expression analysis. For example, this is a pipeline that you would create. So you go from start to bowtie 2T to RSEM and then DSEC2. Now an interesting thing that you can do with the table that shows you the full change between two groups and the p-value, you can use this method called GAGE, which stands for Generally Applicable Gene Set Enrichment for Pathway Analysis. How do we do that? So the first thing that you need to do, here's our table of differentially expressed genes. From DSEC2, the output looks like this. You have gene IDs, so these are ENSGs, so they're ensemble IDs. And then you have a number of columns that show you how they are differentially expressed. For example, you can use the adjusted p-value and log twofold change to identify statistically significant expression differences between groups and measure their fold change. However, GAGE cannot use uh, these ensemble IDs. It typically uses ENTRES or gene symbol IDs. So a way you can translate those is through annotation. You can input the DSEC2 output table that we were just looking at, upload it, and then select annotation to convert it to a table that will look like this. So this is important to remember that you will have the transcript ID and ensemble, and then right here you would use the gene symbol. And so to simplify this, you can just take this column, move it right here, and then delete the rest because the rest is not going to be relevant for the gene set enrichment analysis. So you will have transcript, gene symbol, base mean, log to fold change, and those are essentially the columns that you need. How would you perform the gene set enrichment analysis? This is the final file. Uh, this is the final pipeline, and I will show you in a second what's inside here. But let's for a second create this pipeline from scratch to demonstrate to you how this works. So let's add files. This is the output that I was just showing you that has the ID and the gene symbol. So let's choose this file, wait until it uploads, continue, click on start. Once we start, we click on OK, and then now let's select human gauge. Now the header, we, we do have a header, right? So we have transcript, gene symbol. This is the first row that's called the header. So we are going to say yes. Where do we have the gene IDs? Now this is not the, not the transcript ID, this is the gene, gene symbol. So that's in column number two. And then here what we need is the column with gene differential expression. So this is log fold change of p-value. So you can see log fold change, that is one, two, three, four. Column number four. So that's right here. And the rest you can keep the same. The only thing is you can choose the different gene sets that we have already on the platform. So in this case, we want to get pathway analysis, so we'll use KEG pathways. The FDR threshold is another important feature here that, the, that will um, enable the script to generate visual images of pathways from KEG and the enriched genes. 
So the higher the threshold, the more you will get in terms of your uh, the number of um, pathway images. Okay, so you can, for example, change it to 0 0.5. Now you can click on OK and and then let's save this. Now remember, as you can see, it says human gauge. Uh, the reason it says human gauge is because gauge only works with human files. Now let's take a look at the output. You can go into my pipelines and I just ran this pipeline and now I can take a look at what's inside. So I see the zip file. Let's download it. So here's a zip file and let's see what's inside. So first of all, what I can see is a number of pathway images where I have highly expressed genes as red and low expressed genes as green. So you can see that there are green ones and red ones for each one of these pathways. Now I have a bunch of them, but also I have this table right here that I can use so inside, again, we have a list of those same pathway names, and they actually tell us what they are responsible for. So you see the MAPK signaling pathway, and that is 04010. So you can go 04010 right here. Uh, sorry, 04010 right here. And this is the MAPK pathway. So you can see the gene names, and you can see whether the expression was high, red, or low, green. And you can see that it's fairly enriched. So now you have a list of all of these, and you have a table that shows you their p-value, adjusted p-value, and set size. Now this is going to be used for your cutoff. So you remember our cutoff was 0 0.01, or 0, we increased it. So this is going to be your cutoff for what we have. So a total, it goes from 0 to 1. So let's see, the last one is 0, 03040. 0, so 0, 03040, 0, it's not here. See, so what's the last one that we have? So let's go to 0 0.01, 0 0.05, so 00532, so 00532, right there. And the next one is going to be 00310. So 0, 0, 3, 10. And you don't see it anymore. So that's because we set our cutoff at 0 0.5. Okay? So according to this column, this is Q value, which is an adjusted P value, which is essentially FDR. So that was our threshold. And so changing this threshold doesn't change this table. It just changes how many images you will get. Now, the same thing is important to remember for when you run gauge, but without, uh, not on keg pathways. So obviously if you don't have the keg pathways, you're not going to be having these uh, images in your results. Uh, now how is this useful? Well this is very useful actually in the following way. You can have uh, an a gene of a, a table of expression and then use that table of expression to identify differences in gene expression between two groups and then you can translate this information into biological insight by looking at enrichment of pathways. I hope that this was informative. Um, you can go ahead and try it out on different types of gene sets. Remember this is only going to work for human genes and before you run human gauge you have to transform the table into an annotated table. So in other words, use the annotation button under utilities. You have this annotation button to transform the DSEC2 table into a table with uh, gene symbols or ENTRES IDs.